For the last uh, video this week, what I want to do is I want to take the ideas from the previous uh, topics, previous videos, I want to put them together and I want to I want to set the stage for where we're going. So we're we're going to be learning about component based uh, front end app development using frameworks like React, Angular, etc. So I wanted to take uh, what you already know about doing DOM like dynamic DOM manipulation, working with uh, JSON REST APIs and so on. And I wanted to build out uh, a front-end example. So in the notes this week, uh, in the intro to web services, there's a great little, there's a link to a public um, REST API that you can play with. And so what I thought I would do is I would work with this API. Um, it basically has a, it's a dummy API of fake data for users. So a user has an ID, an email, a first name, a last name, and an avatar picture. So when you when you request this data, um, like here's an example, they're requesting the slash API slash users route, and then they're saying, give me page two. So there are uh, 12, 12 total users that the API returns, but they've implemented some paging. And so I'm getting back uh, six items per page, and so here we go. So the data that comes back from this, if I were to just do it in my browser, looks like this. So I get back this JSON string, and um, my goal today is I wanna take this JSON string and I wanna use it to produce this. So I've written some code, and I'm gonna go through and write it again right now with you and talk about all the different aspects of how I'm, how I'm making it work. So that we have a the code all I've already put it up on GitHub and I'll post the link, but I want to make it so that we have you know the ability to turn data into a front end user experience and we'll optimize it so it works you know for mobile or for wider uh, you know wider viewport sizes. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dive in here and and get us started. So. What I've got is I have a like almost empty project. I have a folder and in the folder, I have um, a shell of an index.html page. And actually this is all the HTML that I plan to write today. So I'm not going to define the HTML for how this stuff looks in, in HTML. I'm gonna do it in JavaScript. I'm gonna do it based on the data that I get back from the web service. But you can see the structure of what I'm doing here. So I have this, I have a, a my HTML page. My H HTML page is going to reference a style sheet. I have that style sheet here and it's empty. And I also in the uh, body, I have a little bit of HTML. So for example, I have the title, like the title doesn't need to be dynamically generated here because this h1 element is static as far as I'm concerned. It's always the same whether these users change or not. However, I have a main element and the main element is empty. So my goal is to render within the main element all of the DOM nodes that I need in order to create this experience that we have here on the left. All right, so to do that, I've got a script and it's source.source.app.js. Uh, source That's where we're going to start. That'll be our main entry point for the code that we're going to build. Okay, now before we go any further, I've got a really small, like just a, the most basic uh, package.json setup. And what I want to do right now is I want to add, I want to add a tool that's going to help me develop this code. So one of the things that we're going to do when we're doing front-end development is we're going to add a build step. So instead of just loading HTML, CSS, and JavaScript directly, we're going to use tools to help us create bundles or help us be able to put a whole bunch of assets together, optimize them, compile them, or transpile them. That term means um, take a program that's written in one language and convert it into another language. So for example, when we learn about working with TypeScript and we need to convert that into JavaScript. So we have a whole bunch of different steps that we need to do. And to do this, I'm gonna use a tool called Parcel. 
So parcel is a parcel is a bundler. And what it lets me do is it lets me take all different assets, images, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and it lets me combine them together at build time. So I add a build step and it's also going to allow me to use things like module systems. So I can use require, I can use import, and I'll demonstrate all of this in a minute. It'll probably be easier if I show you, but the documentation is great. So if you go to parcel.org and read through the documentation, you'll get a, a sense of what it is that I'm going to do. But I'm going to do, I'll do it from scratch right now just to give you a sense of what we have to do. Okay, step one is I need to add it to my project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it and I'm going to save it to um, my dev dependencies as opposed to as opposed to my, my regular dependencies because I only need this in order to do development. So as much as you can, you wanna try and put things into the dev dependencies um, because then they're not needed when if you're deploying this. Like when I'm done, I'm gonna have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, that's it. I'm not gonna need uh, parcel at all in order to work, with, um, to work with the code that I'm gonna write. Okay, this is gonna take forever to download all the different pieces of it. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna go and um, talk about some other aspects of what we need to do here. So in the parcel instructions, one of the things that I need to, I need to tell it to do is I need to add a bunch of scripts to my package.json file. So I need to tell it how to build my project so the command that I'm going to use is parcel, build, and then whatever my entry point is. So in this case, my entry point is going to be this main index.html file. And when you, when you go into the index.html file, parcel is going to find the CSS file, and it's also going to find this JavaScript file. And then if those files include other files, other JavaScript files, font files, image files, whatever, it will bundle all of that together appropriately into a distribution directory or a disk directory. And that's um, what we mean when we say build. However, this is also gonna provide us a development build, if you will. And what's nice about this is it's gonna, it's gonna give us a hot reload web server. So while I'm doing development, every time any of my files are modified, I save them on disk, it's gonna recreate the bundle, set things up again so that I can do this. So I'm gonna need a dev, still going over here. I'm gonna pause this so you don't have to sit and wait for it because it'll take a minute. Okay, that has finished. So when it's done, I have, if I go and look at uh, package.json, you'll see that I now have a new dev dependency, parcel bundler has been added for me. And you'll see that a package lock file has been created and all the 8,000 uh, packages that this depends upon have now been, um, their versions have been installed and updated. And you'll see that actually I have one uh, security vulnerability and it says if I wanna fix it, I can do npm audit fix. So I'm gonna do that. And this is gonna be in one of the dependencies. Uh, what's my problem here? No audit may not be supported. Um, yeah, so node forge is the one that's causing it. NPM audit fix. And it's updated. Okay, so that's great. So I have my uh, I have I have my basic setup. I'm ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these scripts in. So in my package.json file, I want to clear out what I have here. I'm not going to be doing tests right now. We'll be doing tests later on in the course. So for now, I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to write a dev script. And the dev script is going to call parcel. And the reason I can call parcel, if you look at what's in node modules.bin, you'll see that these are all of the binary, uh, the like, they're not binaries, but they're all of the executable scripts that I can run, and one of them is parcel. So up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call parcel, and I'm gonna say, I wanna do um, parcel, and then I'm gonna give it my entry point. My entry point is index.html, 
and I'm gonna do my build script and it's gonna be parcel build. So it's gonna do production build instead of a development build and index.html here. And then because I can never remember um, which one I'm using, I'm gonna define a start script as well. And my start script is gonna run my dev script. So npm run dev. So the reason I'm doing that is so that it's possible for me to say npm run dev if I wanna do that, I can, or I can say npm start, and both of those will do the same thing. So you can see here, it's building my code, and after it finishes building my code, it starts up a web server on localhost 1234, and you can see here that it built, you know, my code is very minimal right now, but I should be able to load my code in here, localhost 1234. And so here's my code running inside the browser like this. And I'll pop open my dev tools and we can start. Okay, so the this page is basically done. I'm not gonna do anything more with it. I'm just going to target this main element in, um, you know, in the rest of the work that I'm gonna do. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into my app and I need to, uh, I'll write a function, an init function which gets called console.log uh, hello world. And I'll do this on load is equal to init. So now I've got my, um, I've got my entry point starting when the window finishes loading. So that's great. So the first thing that I wanna do when init happens is I want to be able to grab the main element. So I'm gonna get the main element now that the DOM is loaded because that's where I'm gonna load all of my content into. So I'm gonna document.query selector and I'll grab the main element. So if I just spit this out, you'll see that I now have access to my main element, which is currently empty. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to get this data into our web app. So I need to load that data into, um, basically into, in, into my code so that I can start working with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new file here. I'll call this, I'm gonna be loading users. So I'm gonna make a file called users.js. And users.js is gonna be where I'm gonna manage all, working with this, with this API. So the API that I wanna work with is um, recres.in slash API slash user. So I'm gonna throw that into a variable here. I'm gonna say HTTPS recres.in slash API. Uh, let's, actually, I'll just do the API URL on its own. So this is the API URL. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a load function. So function load, and I will export this function from, um, from my module. Now, because I'm, because I'm using parcel, it's possible for me to write my code as if I was in node. So I'm gonna be able to write separate files and use require between those files to make it work. So for now, let's just prove that it works. Console.log load was called like that. And over here in my app.js, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull in the load function from users is equal to require users like this. And I'm gonna call I'll just call the load function here so that if it works, it should say, when I save this, load was called. It does, so that works. So now I've got my, I've got my uh, users file that's being connected to my app and Parcel is taking care of making this work. And I'll just show you why this works. So if you go over to the network, what you're gonna see is that my I'm not loading a file called app.js. Instead, I'm loading a file called app.a6, a4, et cetera, all the way across. If I click on this, you'll see that, whoops, you'll see that what I have here is I have a file that's been written for me by parcel. So the parcel bundler has created 
a file that has all of this code. And what it does is it, it implements things like um, require and resolve and all of these different functions that I wanna be able to use. So I wanna make it look like I'm in Node, but I'm not in Node, I'm in the browser. And if you scroll down, eventually you will find your code. So for example, here's the code for my users module. Here's the code for my app.js. And you can see how they're all in the same file. So what a bundler does is it takes all separate pieces of code, combines them together into a single file, and then it manages letting you load them as if you were loading them from disk. Obviously, when I'm in a browser, I can't load from disk like I would with no using node modules um, typically, so I have to do it this way. Um, however, if I go into my debugger, um, you'll see that all of my files are here. So an interesting thing has happened. Uh, Parcel has also created what are called source maps. So a source map, what it does is it allows me to debug the original source code, even though the actual source code that's being loaded looks like this and all the line numbers are different and all the file names are different. Over here, you'll see that this code, so for example, if I put a breakpoint right here inside the load function and I refresh this, you'll see that I am paused in my debugger on that line. So these, the bundler is doing a lot of interesting things for you. It's letting you build your code in a way that's really familiar and lets you create lots of files, directories, keep things organized. But then when you go to run it, you have the best of both worlds. You have, it looks like your code is still the same as it was, but actually it's been bundled together and it's running uh, inside the browser in a different way. So I'm gonna, let me get rid of this breakpoint. I don't want this right now. And let's do some work. So our first task is we need to load these users. Okay, so if you look at this API, in order to load the users, I have to do slash users, and then I have to give a page number, or presumably if I don't give any page number, it's just gonna give me the, uh, the first page. So let's define a URL. So we have a URL and our URL is gonna be the combination of our API URL slash users. Whoops, like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, do a fetch. So I'm gonna fetch this URL and then once I have fetched the URL and I get back a response, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a check. I'm gonna say if the response is okay, well actually I'm gonna say if it's not okay. So in other words, if I get back anything other than a 200 response, then there's a problem. So if I get a 404 or something like that, I have a problem. So if the, if the response is not okay, then I'm gonna throw a new error and I'm gonna say the um, API returned status code, and I'll say response.status, like that. And I'm gonna deal with that problem down here in my promise catch. For now, I'll um, just throw it on the console. Now, if I request the data, it comes back and everything looks good, I get a 200 response, so this here would mean um, not a 200 response. But if I get a 200 response, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return the, re I'm gonna return the uh, parsed JSON from this. When I return the parsed JSON, I also need to do that inside of um, a promise because this is something that's gonna happen asynchronously. So the results, the result of doing uh, this JSON call here I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in the next chain in my promise here and I'm gonna say, take that and I wanna return the results.data. So if you take a look at what I'm being returned, the data that comes back is gonna be an object that looks like this. The only thing I really care about is this array of data. So what I wanna do is I wanna send this data back, uh, send this data back to the calling function. And that looks pretty good. Now, my load function is gonna happen asynchronously. In other words, when you call the load function, what's gonna happen is the function is gonna get to the fetch, it's gonna start the fetch, 
and then it's immediately going to exit. It'll finish. So the problem we're going to have is we need to wait until this fetch completes in order to use the data. So if I want to get the data back, I have to wait on this data. Later on, I'm going to use the newer async await style, but for today, I'll just stick with promises. Hopefully that's something that you have worked with in the past. If it's not and you have questions about it, I, I'd encourage you to ask me online and get some more help. So I'll save this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of this inside of my app. So when I call load inside the app, what I really want to do is I, I need to say, I want to get the users and I, whoops, I want to get users dot load like this. I want to call this, but then I need to wait for it to be finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dot then like so, and I'm going to get back the list of users. And I'll, for now, I'll just console dot log, console dot log those like that. So if we go back here and we try this, let's see what it does. Users is not defined. So this isn't working. So let's take a look at why. So over here, I have a fetch, but I need to return the promise that this fetch is returning. So fetch returns a promise and I need to give that promise back to my app. So I'm gonna say return fetch URL like so. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna do the fetch, then it's gonna run this code. If everything works out, it's gonna do the, um, it's gonna do the JSON parsing. And then once the JSON parsing is complete, it's gonna get those results and it's gonna pull out the data array and it's gonna return the data array back to the next then in the chain. The next then in the chain is over here, like so and it will, it will receive it here. Then uh, it will receive the, uh, receive the data here. Now I'm also going to, I need to do a little bit, I need to be careful here. Oh, let's think about this for one second, the best way that, to do this. Oh, I see, I have a typo here because I, so I did, there's two ways you could do this. I could pull in the entire user's object, but I did object destructing here and I grabbed the load function off of it. But then down here, I am not calling the load function. I was calling the load function on users. So I get this users is not defined on line six. So if I save this, I get what I'm looking for. Okay, so let's see what's, what's going on here. So I'm loading in, I'm doing the fetch on the URL. I am parsing the JSON that I received back, and then I take that object and I, I grab the data and I return that. And then I over here in the app, I make use of that. So I'm, I, I now have access to the all of the data, all of the user objects. So a user has an avatar, image URL, a name, uh, first name, last name, an ID, an email. So this looks good. Okay. So let's do a little bit of error handling here. So in users, what would happen if I, um, like what if, what if I said user instead of users? So if I ran this right now, um, sorry, users, or let's change the URL, let's say API like so. Okay, so now I'm getting this 404 error. And you can see that my error is being printed out. So it says console.warn error, like so. But I wanna, I wanna update the user that something went wrong. So it's no good. A lot of times when uh, people are handing in code to me, they will console log an error and they think they're done. But imagine if you loaded this page and nothing happened. Like as a user, you'd be upset because you have no indication of what the problem is. So let's make a slight change here. I'm gonna log the error to the console like this for my development purposes. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return null like that. And you can see that null is being printed out here. So that means that over here in my app, I am receiving null for my users. So I'm either gonna get the array or I'm gonna get this null. So let's, let's make this code a little more robust. So I'm going to say, um, if we don't get back, uh, if we don't get back the users that we expect. So if we don't get, 
um, let's say users and users.length. So I'm expecting to get an array. If I don't get a, if I don't get an object that has a length that is greater than zero, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out an error message, a simple error message. So I already have my main element. I'm going to say that the inner HTML of this is equal to unable to load user data at this time, like so. And then I'm going to return like that. So now if I run it, I'm going to have a simple error message here. And you could make this look better. So you could, you could, you know, make it a warning or give more instructions or ask the user to click here to try again. Maybe it's just a that the service was down temporarily or something like that. But I don't want my page to crash, quote unquote, to crash or to not do anything. So I want to deal with both the positive and negative case. So if everything works, then what I want to do is I want to take that array of users and I want to loop through them all. So I want to go through each user, and for now, let's just console.log them. Let's do that. So if it works, I want to log them. So obviously, I still have this error here because I have API, so I'm going to save that. And now you can see that what's happening is it's going through all of the different users, and it's printing out each object to, uh, to the console. So that's pretty good. So what I'd like to do is, remember what I'm trying to build. I'm trying to build this. So I need to get the image URL. I wanna get their first name and last name and their email. I wanna get all that information. Um, so let's extract that information from each one of these users. Okay, so I'm interested in all these different pieces of information. So I'm gonna grab the ID. Uh, let's get their name. And because I want to do their first name and last name together, I'm going to combine it right here. So let's do uh, user.first name and user.last name. So I have their name. I want to get their um, email. And I want to get their avatar. URL. So avatar uh, URL is equal to user.avatar. And we can just check this is all working. Console.log ID name, uh, email, and avatar URL. And you can see we've got all that information coming in here. So that looks, uh, that looks good um, in terms of trying to debug it. Okay, obviously I don't wanna put it uh, in the console. So now I wanna think about how I'm gonna display this in the page. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I, my goal, let's just look at one of these. So my goal for each one of these is I wanna create what I'm gonna call a card. So a card meaning I wanna have like a, a rectangle in the rectangle, I wanna have two things. I wanna have the image for the individual's uh, profile picture, and I also wanna have a div, and inside that div, I wanna have their name, and I wanna have their email address. So I've got like, I've got this tree of DOM nodes that I need to construct. The card, and then inside the card, the image, the div, inside the div, the email, and, um, the link for their for their name. I want to construct all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that down into a series of steps. So at the top level, the way my code's going to work is I'm I'm going to make a new let's make a new folder here. I'm going to call it components. So I'm going to refer to each one of these things as a component. So I'm going to think about the card is a component, this profile card. I'm gonna think about the image is a component. I'm gonna think about the name as a component. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna break it down into smaller and smaller pieces. The same way that if you were writing a, a, a function or a program that was made up of functions, you would, you would wanna take any function that was really long, like you wouldn't wanna have a 1000 line function. You'd wanna break it down into smaller and smaller functions. And that's what I wanna to do too. Smaller functions, smaller files. And I'm gonna use my bundler to put this together for me. 
Okay, so the first component that I'm gonna create is um, a profile card. And the idea behind the profile card is I'm gonna make a class. I'm gonna make a class and I'll have a constructor and I'm gonna receive an ID, a name, an email, and an avatar URL. And I'm just gonna store that uh, on, my, uh, on my object. Like so. Okay, so I'm gonna export this module.exports is equal to profile card. So I'll just, ex I'll export the entire class so that I can use this class. Okay, so let's use that class. It doesn't do anything yet, but let's use it inside the app. So inside the app, I'm going to say profile card is equal to components slash profile card, like that. So now instead of logging this out to the screen like this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, const profile card is equal to new profile card and I'll pass in all of that data. And I will just console.log the profile card for now. I won't do anything else with it. So you can see that I have, instead of, um, I now have these special objects, these profile card objects, and each profile card has an ID, an email, avatar, a name. So all that data has been put onto, uh, onto this for me. So what I'm gonna do with my, with my component, my, my, um, my profile card, is I wanna take in data, this data I received from the web service as JSON. I wanna take that data and I want to turn it into DOM nodes. So at the most basic level, so I'm gonna call this process, I'm gonna call it rendering. So I'm gonna make a method on my class called render. And inside here, I'm gonna say const section is equal to document dot create element section. So I'm gonna use a section element for my card. I could use a div, I could use, I need some sort of a block container to hold everything that I'm gonna put in here. And I'm gonna give my section an ID. And the ID is gonna be the um, the, prof the ID of the user with profile. So let's, I gotta turn this into a string. So I'll say profile dash this.id. I'm gonna give my section uh, a class name so that I can style it. I'll call it a profile card. And for the moment, let's do the following. Let's say section.innerHTML is equal to this.name. Let's just stick the name inside here and so that we have something to look at. And then I'm gonna return the section element. So I want, you to, I want you to get a sense of the pattern of what I'm doing here. This is really important for what we're gonna do. We're gonna, from now to the end of the course, you're gonna be doing this sort of thing. You're gonna receive data somehow in a function or a class constructor. You're gonna take that data and you're gonna you're gonna use that data to render DOM nodes. You're gonna use it to create dynamic content in the page based on data. So this profile card component is taking data and it is producing UI. So at the you know the details of how it work happen in my render function here. I'm gonna save this and let's modify how our app uses it. So you see here that I get the data back from loading my users. I have the data for a user and I create a new profile card. Well, instead of logging that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, take my main element and I'm gonna append a new child element to the main element. So inside the main element, I wanna put something. I wanna put profile card.render. So profile card.render returns a DOM node. So if I run this now, you can see, let's take a look at the page. So the page in the body 
has the H1 and then it has a main element. Inside main element, I have sections. So I have a section element for each user. You can see that each one of them has an ID, profile-1, profile-2. Each of these has a class, profile card. And then you can also see that the name has been put inside of the section. Okay. All right, so that's a nice start, but let's take this further. So let's think about the next thing that we need to do. Let's, let's work on the image, because the image would, be, would actually be kind of neat to see. So I'm going to make another component. This component I'll call the avatar. Uh, components, new file, I'll call this avatar.js. So I'm going to make a class, avatar. I'll have a constructor. And in my avatar, I basically want to create an image. So I want to have an image, so I'm going, to, I'm going to need a URL. So I need an image URL. And I also want the user's name because I want to have alt text for the image. Whenever you're putting images on the web, you want to provide alt text for people who are using screen readers or other assistive uh, technologies. So I'm going, to, I'm going to pass in a name and I'll store this. I'll say this dot URL is equal to the image URL. And this dot name is equal to name. So I want to take that data and essentially what I want to do is I want to create something that looks like image source equals the URL, whatever the URL is. Alt text is equal to the user's name. And I want to return something that looks like that. So I'm going to write another render function. Render, render function. And I'm going to create, start off by creating a new image. Const image equals new image. So I make a new image element. You could also use document.createElement image. Both ways work. And I'm going to start setting all of the properties of this image. So what are they? So the image's source is going to be equal to this.url. The image's alt text is going to be equal to this.name. If you hover your mouse over the image and hold it there, that's what we call the title. And so I'm going to set the title. I'm going to give the image a uh, class name. So let's call this profile avatar so that I can style it later on. And I know, just because I know, because I've done this before, that the image uses a width of 128 and 128. They're square images. Image dot height equals 128. So I've created this image and what I'm going to do is I'm going to return it. So you notice that my class doesn't do anything with the web page. This the, the purpose of the avatar is not to draw something to the page. The purpose of this avatar class is to take data and produce DOM nodes. My application is going to take that logic and it's going to use it to put it in the page. Module.exports uh, is equal to avatar. Okay, so let's use this. So if I go back to my profile card, up here at the top, I'm going to pull this in. I'm going to say const avatar is equal to require avatar. And instead of doing what I'm doing here like this. Um, let's let's do the following. Let's create uh, let's create an avatar that we can use to stick in the DOM. So I'm going to say avatar is equal to a new avatar this dot avatar URL and this dot name. And then I'm going to say take my section element append a child to it, and I want to append the avatar render function after it's been called. So generate those DOM nodes. So let's save this. So now you can see what I have is inside each of my sections, I have an image element, 128 by 128. If I hover over it, I get the, I get the user's name like so. Each one of them has alt text, a title, they have a class, etc. So we have all these different uh, pieces going in like this. So this is looking pretty good. 
So this section here has one thing inside it. It has an image inside it. Okay, so let's do let's do the the name and the email. So for each of those, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to say uh, let's do a name and same idea. So the idea behind name would be we take we take in a name constructor takes in a name. And we take that data and we render it. Render. So for the name, let's just use um, a level two heading. So const h2 equals document dot create element h2. And I will set the inner text of this h2 element equal to the user's name. I'll set a class on this. Class name is equal to, let's call it profile name. And let's return the h2 element. So if you wanted to, you could also say module.exports is equal to this class like that. So if you want to do it all in one line, you could also do it that way. Uh, both ways would work. So we've got a name. Let's also do the, let's do the email email.js. So the email, we're going to say uh, class email. Constructor takes in an email address. And we have a render function. So this time what I want to do is I want to make something that looks like this. I want to do an h3 element. So the, the title of the document is h1. The name of the user is going to be h2. And then the email of the user is going to be h3. So I'm going to do an h3. But then I want to be able to click on this. So I'm going to, inside here, I'm going to have an anchor tag and then the user's name like so. So let's do that. So let's say const link is equal to document.create element. Let's make an, an, an anchor tag. This link has an href equal to, now because I want to click on an email address, let's make, let's make a clickable email address. So instead of HTTP, we're going to do mail to. So I'm going to say mail to, and then I want to put the person's email address. So this would be like mail to whoever at wherever.com, like that. And we need to put their uh, email address inside the inner HTML of the link as well. So we'll say this done, uh, email. So now we have a link. So let's make the H3. So we have an H3. Let's give the H3 a class name so we can style it. Profile email. Let's take the link that we just made and put it inside of the H3. So we'll append it here. And then we will return the, uh, return the H3. So in every case, when I'm doing render, you'll notice that I'm just returning one DOM node. And that DOM node contains other child nodes. So now I have a name and I have an email. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them inside of a div. I want to have those things together. So I'm going to make one more component. I'll call this uh, userinfo.js. And userinfo will be you know, both, both pieces. So um, userinfo, you're getting the pattern now, hopefully, has a name and an email address. And it has a render function. So the render method is going to do the following. I need to create a div. Uh, Document.create element div. And inside the div, I want to place, uh, well, I guess I should give it a name, uh, give it a class name. Div.class name um, is equal to user info. Okay. 
So we've already created an email and a name component. We have both of those. So here, what I want to do is I want to use them. So I'm going to say name is equal to require name email uh, require email. So we're going to do the same basic idea that we've done in the past. I'm going to say name is equal to uh, new name, and I'm going to pass in this.name. Email is equal to new email, this.email. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to append those to my div. So I'm going to say div.append child uh, name dot render div dot append child email dot render like that and then when I'm done I'm going to return that div so I need to export this module dot exports equals user info okay so let's hook this up so now in the profile card I have an avatar and I need the user info component. So I'm going to pull that in here. And I need to use that. So uh, const user info is equal to a new user info. And user info takes a name and an email. And after I append the avatar, I want to append the user info.render. So at the very top level, my app is going to render a profile card. The profile card begins this tree. So the, the profile card is going to take care of rendering the avatar and the user information. The user information is going to take care of rendering the name and the email. The name is going to take care of rendering an H2. So you can see that I'm, I'm slowly, slowly, slowly building up this tree of nodes. And so let's go save the profile card. So if I save this, Let's see what we have. We have an error. What is my error? Email is not a constructor on, uh, let's go back here, online. Okay, so inside my user info, what did I do wrong? New email. Oh, I didn't export this. Module.exports is equal to email. There we go. So let's take a look what we have now. I've got a section. Inside the section, I have an image. And then below that, I have a div. And the div has an H2 inside it. And it also has a H3 with the email of the user. And then I have that, uh, I have the link, the mail to link for the user. So this, this is looking good. Well, it's not looking good, but it is It is good. It has all the data that I need, but the styling is brutal. So the first thing I want to do, uh, let's go, let's add some styles. So I have a style sheet here and I need to, I need to clean up the, the styles of this a little bit. So let's do a few things. So on the body, um, I want to, throw in a margin of say 20 pixels. And I also want to set the font family to be uh, like a sans serif font. So it's a little more blocky, like it's it's less, it doesn't have all the little frills and so all the serif uh, features. Okay, so we bump everything in. Then let's, uh, let's modify our, uh, let's modify our main. So what I want to do with main is I want to get this effect here where everything uh, automatically flows. Like you'll see how, see how everything's flowing nicely. Like if I shrink it down, 
it automatically does what I expect it to do. I need to make that effect happen here because right now everything's just vertical. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna tell it to display all of the content inside the main element. So all these section cards, I want all of those cards to be laid out using Flexbox. So I'm gonna say do Flexbox and you'll see that it automatically puts them beside each other, which is closer to what I want. And I also wanna tell it to wrap. So if it hits the edge of the screen, I want it to wrap around to the next line. Okay, that's pretty good. That's getting, that's getting better. So if I make this wider, you'll see that it puts, you know, I can, I can it's, a, it's, it's becoming more responsive now. Okay, so now let's start going through and figuring out how we want each of these cards to look. So we have a class profile card. And what I wanna do with this is I'd like to, um, I'd like to display the contents of the profile card. So inside the section, let, let me just show you what we have here. So a section, this section right here has an image and it also has a div inside it. So it has two things inside it, two children. The div has other things inside it, but this has this card has two things in it. So what I'm gonna do with the profile card is I'm gonna say use Flexbox again. So now you'll see what it does is it flexes in a row instead of flex instead of going vertical. So now it's going sideways. Um, I don't like how the widths don't line up here. So you can see how this is not working and I don't like how there's no space at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do for these cards is I'm gonna throw a little bit of a margin on the bottom. I don't know, like 15 pixels. Push everything down a little bit. And I'm also going to specify that I wanna have a minimum width of say 400 pixels. So that every one of these has to be 400 pixels. So now if I pull this across once in increments of 400, it'll pull them in like this, but they all line up. That's pretty good. Okay, let's play with this uh, image. So the profile uh, avatar, I think that's what we called it. Uh, what is the class name? Profile avatar is the name of the class. Profile avatar is our image. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set, uh, I, wanna, I wanna make it round. So to make it round, I'm gonna do a border radius of 50%. And that cuts away the outside of the circle. And I also wanna give it a border. So let's do a border. Let's make, it, let's make it a little bit thicker, three pixels, let's say, make it solid and black, let's say, like that. So you could do a black one. I'm gonna do a blue to match my link color. So I have a blue that I already picked up before, 74 D9. So I have a sort of a light blue. And you can see how there's like, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there, like, there's a little bit of bleed through from the background, like the background color is white. So in spots, it's bleeding through, which I don't like. So I'm just gonna set a background color to be equal to this same blue. And that cleans it up. So now there's no white showing through. The whole thing is just a blue circle. Okay, so we've done our card. Card looks good. We've done the image, this looks good. Um, but this text here, we've got a couple of problems. It's too close to the image. So we need to fix that. So our user info, we gave it a class name of user info. So let's, let's style the user info in our style sheet too. Okay, so for the user info, what I wanna do is I wanna push everything to the right. So it's too tight to this image here. So I'm gonna say, um, give it a margin on the left-hand side of say 20 pixels. And that moves everything over 
away from, uh, from the edge of the image, which looks better. And another thing that I want to do is once again, I want to use Flexbox. So I want to take all of the items inside this div and I want to, I want to center them vertically. So I want them to be kind of like perfectly spaced in there. So this is always hard to do. So if I, Flexbox is great for this. So I'm going to say, um, display it using Flexbox, but that's not going to be what I want. Cause so by default, Flexbox goes in a row. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want the flex direction to be uh, a column. So now it's going to go vertically. So what's happening now is it's automatically splitting up the space in here so that each of the, the name and the email are getting equivalent amounts of space. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to change the way that it's justifying the extra space around it. So I'm going to I'm going to say when you justify this content, do it around the center, spelled as if you're an American. And now what it's doing is it's going to pull those things down. Now, I, what, one thing I don't like is I don't like how this thing has way too much uh, margin on it. You can see that there's almost 20 pixels of margin on the name. So let's do a little bit of styling on the name. So if I do the profile name, let's get rid of the margin completely. So the margin there is gone. So if we take a look at these, so this has no margin and this has no margin. So that's good. Like so. We'll still clean some things up in a second. So I want to, what should I do with this? I need to change, let's say the font size. Let's make the font size um, 1.5 EM. And let's change the color to sort of a, like a, a dark navy blue, F3F, like that. Get rid of this. Okay, so now we have these. This looks good. Uh, let's let's fix up this. This blue, I want to match the blue over here. Um, so this is the profile email. Profile email, I'm gonna make the font size a little bit smaller, uh, 1.3 EM. I'm gonna get rid of the margins so that everything tightens up. It all comes together. So now these two things are together in the center of this. And I wanna, I wanna fix that um, anchor tag. So within the profile email, there's an anchor tag. And I want to um, just change the color of this to be the same color that I'm using here. Like that. Okay, this looks pretty good. Um, this is a little bit too tight. So I'm gonna take the, the, the minimum width needs to be larger. So I don't know, 15. Yeah, so if I, that opens it up a little bit. So we could play around with this now. So we could decide how much space we want there to be for each one of these cards, like so. But it'll work on mobile, it'll work on wide desktops. Uh, it's working great. And if you take a look at my HTML, the HTML from my page is, essentially empty. There's there's almost nothing there. I'm loading in a shell of an, of an HTML page, but I'm doing all of my work essentially by loading data from a URL, comes in as JSON. I take the JSON data and I convert that into a tree of profile cards. So what I'm starting to do, the concept here is I am moving away from the idea of having to do all aspects of a web app as a static set of HTML. There's nothing wrong with doing static HTML. So what I don't want you to hear me saying is that this way that I just showed you is the best way to do it. This is one way to do it. 
The, the reason that this method is ideal for certain circumstances is when you have data which is dynamic. So you're pulling data from a database and the data is always changing. Every time you load the page, there's something new, constantly have updates. Think about social media or products in a store, how many are available or not. So all of these things can be dynamically done in the web page. So we can build some aspects of the page before in the static aspect of the HTML and other parts of it, we can use JavaScript to help us create DOM nodes that are gonna let us render our, our app so that it looks to the user like all of the HTML is here. But in reality, the HTML that we're sending is very minimal. Um, as we go further on in the course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn about frameworks that are gonna help us do some of the things that I just did manually. So I had to write a lot of code there to create all those DOM nodes and there are ways to make it happen more smoothly. React and Angular are gonna give us all kinds of tools to achieve this. But I wanted to start out by showing you sort of the full cycle of taking um, an API and using it to build a dynamic, uh, a, a dynamic web app. Like this is, do you call this an app or, or a page or a site? Whatever it is, it is uh, it's based on data. So it's similar to what we saw with the Starbucks model in an earlier video. Anyway, I'll pause it there. The code is available on GitHub. So you can pull that down. And actually I have a challenge for you. One of the things that this uh, API does is it lets you um, do paging. So we're only getting the first six people from the possible 12 people. It'd be interesting for you to change my code, modify my code so that it works for all 12 people, or even you might wanna do something where you add like a load more button or something down here. When the user clicks on load more, it automatically goes and gets the next page and then renders those into the page as well. That's an extra challenge for you to think about.